Good morning. Boy, that was big, wasn't it? Calm down there, preacher. Don't be so loud. It's good to see you all and welcome you to worship uh, today. This is the third Sunday after Pentecost in the Christian year. And it's also the beginning of uh, our celebration of Independence Day uh, in uh, the land. So this is a, a great time to be together to join our hearts and minds and voices uh, in the deepest praise and thanksgiving that we can for life and for love and for all that God has given us, especially the freedom to come here today and worship as we are led by the Holy Spirit in the teaching of Holy Scripture. Uh, the pastor is on vacation, so we'll keep uh, Pastor Dave and his wife in our prayers. I think their vacation is really going to be pretty much devoted to uh, moving uh, from the house they were living in in Newark over to the parsonage uh, here in Brandywine 100. So we'll keep them in our prayers and ask that in all of that busyness they find some time, uh, you know, to celebrate the holiday season. If you're visiting with us, thank you for coming. It's a joy to have visitors in our midst. We're glad you're here. Uh, there are cards in the pews that you can use to register your attendance. Please do that, if you will, so that we can recognize you. And then if you'll stop at the hospitality table in the narthex following the service, uh, there's a gift for you as a first-time visitor. And having said all that, let's stand and greet one another now as we gather for worship this morning. Good morning, St. Paul's. A vacation Bible school will be held July 14 and 15 this year, and it will be an evening program. With this move to the evening, we are, asked, uh, we are planning a VBS for everyone to enjoy. The program is for all ages, so everyone can participate. Uh, we hope that families will attend. Dinner will be served at 6, followed by a program we will have music, a craft, and a game. Uh, and I said everyone is welcome, and that is also our theme. God's family, everyone is welcome. Please sign up in the Narthex or on the St. Paul's website. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Please rise for the call to worship. The text for the day, for freedom, Christ has set us free. The hymn is the number 57, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are waiting and working for good in the world. Stir up in us the desire to serve you as we worship you today and help us to live peacefully with our neighbors as the scripture enjoins so that we may devote each day to the leadership and to the blessing of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated and turn with me, if you will, to page 798 in the hymn book. We're having a reading of the Psalter this morning from Psalm 77. I cry aloud to God, aloud, that God may hear me. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. Your way, O oh God, is holy. You are the God who works wonders. You manifest your mighty, your might among the peoples. When the water saw you, O oh God, when the water saw you, they were afraid. The very deeps trembled. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings illumined the world. Your way was through the sea, your path through the great waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. Amen. I think the speaker who wrote this psalm must have been here yesterday afternoon during the rainstorm. But when, he, when we came in, we found some evidence of it already in the building. But uh, thanks be to God, the building withstood. The brunt. Uh, Sue, we have a couple places to show you just because we know you're looking for them. In. It, <laughs> isn't it wonderful to be contemporary? The psalm is so much like the weather we go through here at the beginning of this 4th of July weekend. Thanks be to God. I think we have a junior sermon now, Carol. Children, come forward. Hannah, you're so lucky today, aren't you? Well, he's <laughs> no. coming. Oh, good. Great. Oh, somebody's maybe a little bit shy, you think? Oh, okay, great. Okay, well, today we're going to talk about freedom. Pastor Finch's sermon is Why Freedom? And it's a great sermon for this time of year because what holiday are we coming upon? Fourth of July. Okay. Do you know why we celebrate the Fourth of July? To honor people who died in wars. Do you know what happened on July 4th, 1776? of independence was not signed on July 4th. It was established on July 4th. It was actually signed August 2nd. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so do you know what the Declaration of Independence did? It ended slavery? 
What it did was we declared our independence from Britain. We said we you know, want to believe that God gave us rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and we declared our independence from Britain. Well, another kind of freedom that we're going to talk about today is the freedom that we have because Jesus died for our sins. Uh, when Jesus died on the cross, he took on all of our sins. So we were slaves to sin, and now we are free because Jesus died for us. Now, because Jesus died for our sins, does that mean we can do anything we want to do? No. You think it means we can do anything we want to do? Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you a story about my daughter when she was about 16, when I guess she thought she could do anything she wanted to do. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> uh, she uh, had been, do, they, do you call it grounding when you get in trouble with your, your uh, mom? Is that what it's called when you uh, have things taken away from you or you can't go anywhere? What do you call that today? I just call it a long time to think about what I did. <laughs> okay. Back in the day, they called it grounding, which meant you couldn't go out with your friends, you couldn't go anywhere, you had to stay home and think about what you did, okay? So it seemed like my daughter, she was 16, and she could drive, and it seemed like every time she got the car, she did something she wasn't supposed to. She went somewhere she wasn't supposed to go. She uh, didn't come home on time. Every holiday weekend, every long weekend, she was grounded. So finally, 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 she got off grounding, and I told her, you can go to your friend's house and bring your friend back, and I want you to come straight home. Okay? That sounds like a pretty easy thing. Well, the girl's mother called and said, have the girls gotten there yet? And I said, no. Where did they go? She said, oh, they went to get some pizza, and then they're coming to your house. Uh, that wasn't what I told her to do. <laughs> that wasn't the rule. So when she got home, I said to her, you have been grounded so many times. How could you do this? Why would you not do what I told you? And you know what she said? I felt so free. Well, you can guess what happened. She got grounded. Right. And she had a long time to think about it. <laughs> So I guess, although Christ has freed us from our sins, it still means that we have to follow what he tells us to do. Okay? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Well, I'm sure there's plenty more that don't. Well, I think all the people out here still have to do what Jesus yeah. wants them to do. So even when they're 21, they can't do what they want. So but then you're an adult. <laughs> You still can't. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our freedom. Uh, we thank you for our freedom in this country. We thank you for our freedom uh, from sin. And we just pray that you will always help us to be in the center of your will. And bless these children. In Jesus' name, amen. of the day. Lord God Almighty, who has made all peoples of the earth for your glory to serve you in freedom and peace, grant to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance, that we may use our freedom in accordance with your gracious will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
Please join me in a moment of silent prayer. Amen. Sandra will be signing the song Shine on Us by Phillips, Craig, and Dean. This is her offering to God and to you. Please do not clap. Just receive. Thank you.
The sermon ain't that good. <laughs> so already we've benefited, haven't we, in a wonderful way from being here in the house of the Lord. This is a time now to gather the joys of the congregation and prayers of the people and offer them up to God for the divine help that is available to us through the petition of our concerns and prayers. Joys, joys. Yes, the joy back here, Tom. Joy for a new job. Wonderful. That is great joy, isn't it? Great. Other joys to go along with Jen's new job. Yes. So, 29th, after a wedding on the 28th, right? We're closed for business here, but open down in the fellowship hall. Is that right? Yes. yes. We're going, we've done that before here, haven't we? Had a good time doing that, just shift the venue of worship. But uh, then the, I guess, this is a facelift? It's a total facelift, so... Uh, we'll all be praying for the folk who are giving leadership and supporting the uh, work here in the sanctuary beginning July the 29th. Thank you, Sue. Let me raise some prayers, concerns with you, may I? Uh, Barbara Thayer uh, has just experienced a tragic loss in her family. Um, her cousin's... Her double cousin's husband, an experienced uh, pilot and, uh, and wonderful Renaissance man, suddenly lost control of his plane, plunged into a river, and he lost his wife. He was 63 years of age, and his name is Kevin. Will you remember Barbara as she grieves this loss, and will you remember Kevin's family? as they celebrate his life and grieve this loss. Also, uh, Larry Kelly is with family today. Uh, Larry and Bonnie and members of the family are in England. They are visiting the homeland there in Ireland, and during their visit, his sister became very ill and had to be hospitalized, and she is in the hospital in London, England at this time let us remember them in our prayers and ken holmes is still recuperating from surgery very difficult time for him he's in the hospital here in wilmington uh, looking to be dismissed sometime this week to a rehab center let's keep ken and um, his family in our prayers are there others yes it, uh, well, we'll have to vote on that, won't we? <laughs> yes. We're happy to have Eleanor Lagomelsky here today. Eleanor, you are here. Thank you. Good to see you. Yes, bless you. Yes. think Nora might make it difficult for this fellow to come in, huh? Well, he'll learn to be a fighter right off, won't he? <laughs> That's the only way he can survive. Thank God for new life. Thank you, Debbie. Appreciate it. Yes. Frank. Let us remember Frank and Jean in our prayers, Frank, just now having had surgery for the removal of a mass from his brain. They're members over at Aldersgate. How many of you will remember Frank in your prayers this week? 
Yes. Thank you. Upstairs. Yes. Jane. Yes. Rob Kennan's sister passed away, and he is still in the process of, of grieving her loss, and he will be back. And Jane Valkenberg? Van Valkenberg is substituting, and thank you, Jane, for coming to our service and for this concern. Yes. Eye surgery tomorrow, and uh, we hope everything goes well with you. And Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayers. Yes. First cousin? What is her name? April. And she's in the hospital recovering from an accident. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes. Thank you, God, for July the 4th. Thank you for what it means. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for its feel. Thank you for its blessing. Thank you for the way it... Um, it brings us into a world that is constantly changing, that is established as you have decreed on the foundations from of, old, from of old and yet is constantly revealing its wonders to us in ways that challenge us to be confident in our strength, in our purpose, in our mission as the people of God. It's a wonderful time for us to be together we thank you for the joys we've raised. These are the blessings of liberty, which we um, work uh, to secure for ourselves and our posterity. We're grateful to you for every moment of progress and for the life that is given us in the way in which uh, it unfolds before us. Hear us as we pray for these folk that uh, are near and dear to us, our family and friends who've suffered loss and who stand now even as we raise our voices in prayer in harm's way. We know that um, the healing of your seamless dress is by our beds of pain. We touch you in life's storm and stress, and we are whole again. We offer this prayer in confidence because there is no place on this earth where you are not. There is no concern that does not move your loving heart. And so, with confidence in the invitation to cast our cares upon you because you care for us, we offer ourselves our joys and our thanksgivings and our prayers today in the name of the Christ who has taught us to say when we pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live within it. And in the strength and in the confidence, such a declaration provides for us, let us now offer our gifts to God, both of life and of treasure.
blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Amen. O oh Lord, give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying to the church this day. Amen. You may be seated. It's a very serious uh, scripture this morning about the way we should be living. It's taken from Galatians, and it's the fifth chapter, starting with the first verse, and then I'll be skipping down to the 13th uh, verse. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that are you, you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, lasciviousness, idolatry, sorcery, and immediate strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I warned you before. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. And Carol said, as we were preparing for the service, uh, boy, this is tough scripture, isn't it? I said, yeah. Um, and don't hold me too closely to it, Carol, because I'm just a little baby duck. Sometimes I'm real good at keeping the requirements that are set forth in Scripture, and uh, sometimes I just seem to be a long ways away from them and wonder if this is a call to me at all. And, you know, like the person in the reading from the psalm this morning, I'm crying aloud to God, really loud, so because I want God to hear uh, I'm not sure I'm where I ought to be, so that's why I come to church every Sunday. It does not work, Ken. <laughs> Ken said, does it work? I think it does. I think it does. You know why? Because it's an act of freedom. Isn't it wonderful? Uh, there are places where we don't have the freedoms that we enjoy in this land, especially the freedom of worship, and I think uh, it's, it's good. Uh, John Adams thought he's the guy that got us going with the 
sparklers and the Roman candles and all of the firecrackers and all. He thought that ought to be all over America to celebrate the independence of the country. And that was a long time ago, right after it first was experienced, and we're still doing it today. Freedom. Why freedom? I love the sentence in the, uh, like the sentence, I'm intrigued by it, in the, the latter part of the Declaration of Independence where uh, the signers said, and for the support of this declaration, with firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we pledge to each other our mutual, in our mutual, we pledge our mutual support to each other, our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor to support the declaration that we're free. Why freedom? Why would you do that? Would you do that? You don't have to shake your head up and down. Right? If your eyes are, are open, that's all right. If your eyes are closed, shake it up. Why would you say that? Why would you say, this is important enough for me to put my life on the line to make sure that it gets done? My fortune, everything I have, and my sacred honor, my word. You can depend on my support because I've said I'm going to support it. And I would rather do anything in this world than to say something I don't intend to do. And I don't intend to support. That's what those people did when they wrote this document, or when they had it written, and then took it back to the Continental Congress for its support. We support it this way. We believe the people of this country will support it this way as well, they said. Why? What is there? There's other choices, right? I mean, freedom is costly. You remember the story of the Grand Inquisitor from Brothers Kamaratsov, Dostoevsky. When Jesus comes back, the old fellow comes out of the woods and says, wait a minute, you're offering people freedom. That's too big a price to pay for that. That's a hard gift. It'll require too much of them. We give them bread, and the bread will keep them in a state of genuine contentment. So don't come here and offer us freedom. I, that, that's a poor rendering of a great Russian novel. You'll forgive me, won't you? The contrast, though, between what it costs to be free and the ease of being dependent when someone comes along and says, well, you won't be exactly what you want to be, but here's what I'll give you as compensation. You'll be unfree, but you'll be safe and you'll be secure, and you can depend on me because I'll take care of you. But that's not what the Declaration of Independence celebrates, is it? Why freedom? Because freedom is the gift of God. Freedom is what ties us to the mercies of heaven. It was the first thing that was said in the document. We hold these truths to be, and Jefferson wrote, when he first wrote it, sacred and undeniable. And the committee changed that to self-evident. He thought it was the same thing. But sacred, undeniable, that all of us are created by God or by our divine creator uh, in a way that makes us free individuals. That is a gift of God. It's taken and it's given in order for us to use it in a way that blesses our lives and the life of the world. And nothing is more precious than life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness or property. Endowed is the word. It means you're given something. You didn't earn it. 
it was given you by the person who has the authority to give it, either money or property. Well, they didn't give us too much money in the Declaration, but they gave us the property of freedom. You've got that. It's yours, and it is an inalienable right. No one can take it from you. You like that kind of being that kind of person? That's why the Declaration was written. It's worth giving everything we've got in order to secure the blessings of liberty, as we went on to say later in the Constitution, to ourselves and our posterity. I think we ought to sing. I asked Jane if we could break into song without announcing it, and she said, and there's a line in uh, my country, tis of ye, the, do you all say thee at home anymore? <laughs> thee and thou, I love it, especially when family members get mad at each other, and they say, thee and thou. Let's sing um, my country, tis of thee. First, first line, do we need a book to do that? My country, tis of thee, sweet land. Let's, let's do that. That's a way of celebrating the 4th of July in church because, as Paul has said, it's not just a gift of the state, it's a gift of God. For freedom, Christ has set you free. Let's sing that, Jane. You want to sing solo? Want to sing another one? All right. What do you want to sing? Jane said she could play anything that's in the book. All right. Uh, yes. You want to sing? Anybody? All right. Why freedom? Because it's a gift of God. And it's altogether appropriate for us to gather in, in a sanctuary devoted to the worship of God and to say thank you for this gift and for its support. We pledge to one another with firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. Our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Are we there? Okay, uh, that's one reason. Um, that's, that's one answer to the question, why freedom? The other is, is because it is um, a way to get things done. You have to be a useful person to have the freedom to move around and to do what you need to do in order with your life. And sometimes that's de denied. That's denied to people in our world today en masse, where they're looking for ways to support their families and themselves and to secure their future for themselves and their posterity, and they're prevented from doing it because of forms of government and control and power that will not let them achieve that dream. That's worth reversing with everything that you have. I was thinking of the lady the other day who, you know, I know we've got this problem on the border. I have coming to America... We are a land of immigrants. My people were immigrants. If it weren't for the freedom to move into this great place, I wouldn't be here. I know that. And here's a mother who's retching with fear because her child does not have enough to eat, does not have medical care, has absolutely no hope, and is living under the threat of the domination of drug cartels and criminals and a government that won't do anything about it, what is she going to do? Put that child on a bus and do everything possible to get that child into a land where that's not the rule of law 
and not the rule of life. And who wouldn't do that? Who wouldn't want the freedom to do that? Who wouldn't want to say to people that take away the blessings that God has given this earth and say, you can't have it because we say so? No. Why freedom? Because it gives us the opportunity to achieve what we believe is the treasure and the gift of God in our lives. And number three, why freedom? Because it's a peak experience, and I love that maybe more than anything. To be free is just absolutely unparalleled in terms of what life is like. Just to say, God. I like that um, one of the closing scenes in the Shawshank Redemption. Do you all watch those old films? Come on now. You're free to do it. They rerun them all the time, those old films. Oh, what is that? I watch it because I love the end of it where Andy Dufresne, after having been imprisoned for 20 years for something he didn't do, and in his ingenuity and in his desire to live, said, this prison is not going to take my life. I'm going to get busy living. And so Andy finds a way over time, as you all remember, piece by piece, stone by stone, with a little, uh, a little hammer, a jeweler, something or another. Doesn't look big enough to make a hole in the wall, but he does it. And then he goes out to freedom. 500 yards through a sewer and lands in a creek. And you get the scene. And he takes off his shirt <laughs> and it's rainy. And he looks up into the heavens and he lifts his hand and he is free. And there's no experience in the world like that. Just to be free and to say, Life is a gift. God has given it me. I can use it. I can bless not only myself, but I can bless the world with the powers and the energies of this gift, and I'm going to do it. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to feel what it's like to be human on this earth. That's peak, isn't it? Can't get any better than that. That's better than apple pie. I mean, that's just, that's very brief, isn't it? But to be free and to feel it in your soul in your body, to have it, to be motivated by it. There's nothing like it. And, of course, the price you have to pay to get there is worth every penny and every ounce of energy that you devote in order to pay it. That's enough, isn't it? Are you glad you're free? Oh, you don't act like it, you just... You know, I love that... Uh, there used to be an old British uh, comedy. What was it called? Are You Being Served? Anybody ever watch that? Mrs. Slocum and Captain Peacock and uh, some of the other characters. And I always loved Mrs. Slocum because anytime she argued with someone and won the argument, she would conclude by saying, and I am unanimous in this. <laughs> I said, wow, this so she must be Methodist. The last word has been said, and I am unanimous, but uh, I love the way in which they would call to each other when they needed help. They were, they were, clerk, they were uh, employees in a department store, and their way of summoning help from one of their colleagues would say, Are you free? Are you free? And isn't that a wonderful question for us to hear someone call out to us? Are you free? Are you free? Do you, do you cherish the gift with which you're endowed? Is that something you're willing to give everything to keep and to let no one alienate? Will you use it, as Paul said, Carol pointing out in the difficult passage, not just to satisfy yourself, but to bless the world? 
with the uniqueness of your talent and what you've got to give because God has made you free. Are you free? And are you free because you've decided it's better to live than to sacrifice yourself to the powers that make you unfree. Thanks be to God for freedom. Let's celebrate it this weekend and uh, be thankful to God for every moment we have it and pledge ourselves uh, as citizens of this land and citizens of the kingdom of God to be in the place when freedom rings, to say yes to its call and to the energies that it demands of us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for freedom. Thank you for the way it makes us feel. Thank you for the paths of service it opens to us. Thank you for remembering us as your creation designed to be free. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. America the Beautiful, number 696. Let us stand and sing that together as a closing hymn. The service has ended, but your life goes on in freedom and in power. Go now to serve in Christ's name. Be kind, be strong, love one another, live in peace, and the peace of God be with you now and always. Amen. Okay.